Okay, so my first step then is to prepare the propeller itself to be balanced. What I've elected to do was to add the faceplate as well as the nuts and bolts and washers that are going to attach it to the engine. Um, I've taken the time to weigh each individual bolt, each individual nut, and each individual washer, and it turns out that all the nuts weigh the same, all the bolts weigh the same, and all the washers weigh the same. I kind of expected the washers to weigh the same because they're pretty small and there's not a lot to them. The castle nuts, considering how they're made with the, the grooves in them for the cotter pin, I was mildly surprised to, to learn that they weigh the same. The bolts I'm really surprised because they're big, um, they've got a drilled hole, and uh, to me there seems like there could be quite a bit of variance uh, from bolt to bolt, but surprisingly they all weigh the same. But just to give myself peace of mind, I've, I've decided to go ahead and mount the bolts and the nuts and the washers and mark their location in relationship to the faceplate and the propeller. So I've got a, a reference line here and a reference line on the faceplate. And then off of that reference line, I numbered the nuts and bolts going clockwise. And then I put little black tick marks on the washers. So this is washer number one here. And then this is two, three, there's four with the four tick marks, five, and then six has six tick marks. Again, probably not necessary, um, but I just felt better weighing and balancing uh, as much as I could, uh, just to stay as accurate as I can be with uh, the mechanism that I'm going to be using to balance. So this is ready to go. The propeller itself is ready to be balanced. and. Uh, I'm going to get my other stuff set up here and then come back. All right, I uh, keep forgetting that I have a tripod that I can mount this camera to for a lot of my videos. So try to keep the motion sickness down to a minimum for you guys that are watching this. I'm going to break it out and uh, see if I can't uh, demonstrate what I need to demonstrate and stay within the viewfinder of the camera. All right. So what I have here is the various components that I'm going to be using for my particular prop balancer. It's, uh, it's a version, my own little version of a popular known balancer called the Buzzmaster. That balancer is made for propellers that have a one inch diameter hole and of course with our uh, continental type of propellers that have a two and a quarter inch hole that will not work so I've made up my own little system here. First of all is this piece of aluminum that I machined. Um, I'll get some still photographs of all these components with some close-up shots so you can see more of the detail. But uh, it's, this is just a piece of aluminum I believe it's 6061. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, it's got a 16th inch hole drilled all the way through it. It's got a good chamfer on this end and it's got a good size chamfer on the other end. This fits the propeller hole. This will basically uh, self align up in the propeller. This flange then is what the propeller will actually rest on. And the idea is to have the string pass through here and it will hold this little bubble level that has the graduation marks on it. The string will get tied to this and it will rest on the piece of aluminum in this fashion. The propeller will be here and the string will go through this next piece which is again machined to two and a quarter inches in diameter to fit the propeller. Again it has a sixteenth inch hole all the way through with a chamfer on the one end. On the other side is a quarter inch hole, roughly. This is a little bit smaller than quarter, quarter of an inch. And this hole goes all the way down roughly about three-eighths or so from the bottom. And I'll explain more about why I did that in a minute. But again, if you can picture this in place with the propeller sitting here, the string going through it, the bubble level on this end, 
This is also up in the body of the propeller with the string going through it. And then this is just a turnbuckle eye that the string will be attached to. And then this is going to get chucked in my drill press chuck and the whole assembly then will be suspended from the drill press. So uh, let me get it put together and I'll come back and show you what it looks like assembled. Give you some tips on the assembly itself and then I'll explain a little bit more about this, this whole configuration in this piece. So let me do that. Alright, a couple of details here before I get too far along in this prop balancing video. Here you'll see the uh, aluminum adapter that I had fabricated and I have my bubble level and you can see that the bubble level has the black lines on it, the graduation marks. What you won't see is the center line graduation mark because I have my string tied exactly over top of it so the string is tied on the center line of the bubble level itself. The uh, aluminum piece has a 16th inch hole drilled all the way through it and it has this relatively large chamfer on it as well. The purpose for that is so that when, let me switch hands here, when there's tension put on the string, the knot that's tied around the bubble level now has a place to nest and that allows the bubble level itself to lay flat on the aluminum and the knot is nestled down in the chamfer and doesn't interfere with any of the uh, alignment between the aluminum adapter and the bubble level. So that's, that's why I put that chamfer there, just so that the knot of the string has a place to go. All right. The other thing I want to talk about real quick is this other piece of aluminum that I machined and again it has a 16th inch hole drilled all the way through with the chamfer. This side has another hole it's a little bit smaller than a quarter of an inch in diameter and this hole goes all the way through and stops short roughly three-eighths of an inch or so from the bottom. Not real critical I didn't do any real measuring I just set the depth on my drill press and brought it down roughly three-eighths of an inch or so from the bottom. The reason I did that is because this, this distance here, the height of this adapter is an inch and a half. So with this on the bottom of the propeller and this piece up in the propeller, they're not going to be touching like that. They'll be separated somewhat but if you can imagine the string going all the way through here, if that string is tight and it's all the way through here and this was nothing more than a sixteenth inch of a hole, the metal itself is going to keep the string straight. So what I had decided to do then was to make this hole larger so that the string has uh, room to move and that will allow the propeller a little bit more room to to rotate and pivot and it's a it's a good visual indicator when the prop is bounced the string should come up through the center of this hole if this hole was really big it would be hard to discern when the string was centered with it being small like this it's very easy to tell just by looking at it when the string is centered on this hole and I'll go over this a little bit more uh, when I get the assembly put together and I think it will make a little bit more sense then. But um, I just wanted to get some of this stuff brought to your attention before I get too far along and then remember after the fact that it needs to be covered. I think maybe I can demonstrate what I was trying to say with this uh, larger hole in my aluminum adapter here. Um, again, this, this is pretty much how it's going to be set up with the uh, bubble level underneath and the propeller will sit on top here. This piece here at the moment is free to move up and down. This is going to be placed in the propeller in such a manner that it's basically a sensitivity adjustment. 
the further out I have this, or in other words, the, the closer to the top that I have this to the propeller as opposed to down at the bottom, it decreases the sensitivity of the balance. Having it all the way down here at the bottom is going to be quite sensitive, and as I move it up toward the top of the propeller, it decreases the sensitivity. But what I wanted to demonstrate was you could see with that larger hole that the string has room to move. This, this can sway around quite a bit. If this was a sixteenth inch hole all the way through all of this, it would be a little bit more tight and it wouldn't allow the propeller to, to move around freely or as freely, but with the hole being in it, that gives it some movement to, to move about freely. And then you could, as I was saying before, you can kind of judge along with the bubble level when it's balanced because the string will be centered in the hole something like this as opposed to off to one side or the other or forward back. If this hole was really large you could see it would be relatively difficult to discern when the string was actually centered in a really large hole. So that's the idea behind that. Here's my propeller on the uh, drill press getting ready to uh, suspend it from the chuck. I have a um, drop cloth on the drill press table as a pad and then I've got my aluminum pieces inside the propeller with the string and then I have my turnbuckle eye in the drill press chuck with the string. Now what's nice about this setup is, is you can rest the prop on the table and then now all I have to do is lower this and I'll get some tension on the string and eventually suspend the prop and there's no real threat of dropping the propeller because if something were to let go it would just settle in on the, uh, the padded drop cloth. So I'll just keep lowering this until it uh, suspends itself. There we go. And it is literally that easy. So what I can do now, um, well the next thing that I have to do is I'll have to either lower the table or I can swing it out of the way in this manner so I can see underneath at the bubble level because what I'll need to do now is I'll have to get underneath the propeller and make sure that the bubble level is oriented in line with the blades. So if looking underneath I'll have to turn the bubble level so that it's in alignment with these two propeller bolts as a reference um, in general. But I, I'm looking at these bolts now and I guess they, they kind of look like they line up tip to tip. So I'll have to look at that a little bit more closely. But anyway, you want the bubble level aligned with the propeller blades and not uh, going across the blades per se. So let me do that next. And I can start, I believe I can start uh, figuring out where the uh, weights need to go for the balance. So here's my solution to my propeller balancing issue. I had a problem with the lateral uh, balancing of the propeller as well as from tip to tip. So what I ended up doing was buying longer 3 8 inch bolts and the additional weight with the length of those bolts as well as a extra flat washer and a nut um, times two. That took care of my lateral balance issue and then um, adding just a couple of extra flat washers on this bolt took care of my tip to tip issue. So now this is pretty much balanced. It's, um, I'm going to say it is balanced. If you come underneath this will probably go out of focus and there will probably be some glare but you could see the bubble. The prop is still moving a little bit but you could see the bubble is 
centered. So this is done. I'm going to assemble it as is using the appropriate nuts and washers that I just talked about, but uh, I'm going to call this complete and I'm going to start assembly.